Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Notes from the Sewing Room. My name's Becky. Today's video is all about what I've been making during December, as well as my progress so far on my Tilling the Buttons Eden coat. Well, I hope you've had a lovely Christmas if you celebrate it. Um, December has been such a busy time for me, so apologies, I haven't actually been here on the vlog for a few weeks. I had the best of intentions to um, come back on the vlog literally the week after I'd filmed my last video, but what with one thing or another, I seem to have got you know, waylaid doing other things. So um, I just thought I'd give you a bit of an update on um, what I've been doing um, project wise and also like elsewhere kind of in my life. Um, so yeah, December, I mean, it's such a busy time for a lot of people, but for me, December seems to have been busier this year than ever before. I don't really know why, to be honest. Um, I've not really had a lot of time off uh, work or anything like that. But apart from that, um, I've had um, three different Christmas parties that I've been to, I've been uh, making things for the house, I've been baking for Christmas Day and for other days around the festive period when we've had people coming over. So um, you probably know that I, I really enjoy baking, it's one of my other kind of uh, loves apart from um, sewing. So um, this Christmas I made uh, lots of mince pies, I've put some in the freezer and uh, we've eaten some as well. Um, I say some we've eaten a lot, so um, yeah. <laughs> and I've also made uh, ginger biscuits and I made a lemon cake as well. Um, so I really enjoyed doing all of that. And I was actually quite proud of myself that I got a lot of that done on one evening as well. Came home from work, got the oven straight on, um, and started mixing and whatnot with my uh, with my apron on. And um, yeah, so got my, managed to get quite a lot of that done. Um, I did have to stay up quite late, but that's fine. I don't mind. I was um, enjoying doing my kind of um, baking stuff so um, that was really fun. Um, I've also been making a few projects for people uh, for Christmas um, as well as for a few bits for the house as well. Let me tell you about some of the things that I've been making uh, for the house first of all. Um, now I just thought why not make a few extra decorations. I, I've got my Christmas tree out and I thought you know the, the tree itself looks okay but I felt like the room needed a few more um, kind of bits if you know what I mean just to kind of brighten the place up a little bit so I decided to make some homemade bunting. Now I can't actually show you um, as in in my hand at the moment because it's still actually up on the wall. Um, I've got some um, just behind me here in the dining room you probably can't quite see it because it's just at the top in between those pictures um, and then I've also got some um, to the side of me as well uh, which is some red bunting. Um, now the red um, is a kind of Kath Kitsony type fabric, it, it's not Kath Kitson, um, but it was something um, that I'd got left over from a skirt project back in summer, um, but I, I thought because it was red it kind of has that kind of festiveness about it. I know that's not really a word but um, that's fine. Um, so um, yeah I made that and I'm really pleased with it. Um, I decided to make some bunting really after um, going over to uh, my friend Vicky's house. So Vicky's on Instagram, So Little Sparrow and um, I saw that she'd got some lovely red bunting in her kitchen so I just thought why not I'm going to make some for myself as well and it's such a speedy project to make so I really enjoyed doing that. Apart from that I decided to um, pick up some festive type fabric and make a tablecloth and also some napkins. Now, if you remember in my last video, I was talking about having this fabric and I wasn't really sure what I was gonna make. I knew I was gonna do tablecloth, but I wasn't sure what I was gonna do uh, with the rest of the fabric. So the bunting that's directly behind me, I've actually uh, made out of this lovely kind of woodland themed fabric. If I hold that up, you can probably see what the print is on the screen a little bit there. Um, so I decided to make the bunting. Um, I got these napkins, so I made six napkins. There was only actually four of us for Christmas dinner, um, but um, I made six because I thought, why not? I can use them again another time. I'll probably bring them out at New Year. And if I have got friends perhaps coming over another time as well. Um, so yeah, really pleased with those. Um, they were so easy to do. All I did was put my fabric out on the table, drew around a book, um, and then I've overlocked all of the edges and then top stitched it round. So they were super easy. I think the key to these was the ironing. So after I'd overlocked them, I literally just turned over the edges and ironed the overlock stitch down. Um, that gave me a nice crisp edge to actually do my top stitching. So that worked really, really well. And um, I've never even thought of making napkins before. So thank you to those of you who uh, left me a comment below and um, suggested that napkins might be a good idea. Uh, so I've taken that on board and I'm really pleased with those. Um, I did actually have a few compliments 
for my family as well on Christmas Day, so um, that was really cool. Um, I also made a lovely tablecloth. So I've never made a tablecloth before, but you know, rather than buying one, I wanted one that I can use again and again, year after year. Um, so um, yeah, I decided to make my own. So if I hold it up, you can probably see it, but I will put some um, pictures up of it actually on my table as well. Um, as you can see, I'm actually sitting at my dining room table at the moment and the cloth isn't on. So um, I did think about leaving it on, but then I just thought it'd actually be quite awkward to show you. So I decided to take some pictures of it when it was on instead. Um, so what I did is I used this um, green fabric with the stars on for um, the centre. If I hold that up, you can probably just see a little bit more of the prim. Um, and then I decided to do um, kind of a border uh, with this lovely animal cotton. So they're both cotton poplins um, I bought from a local shop um, close to me in Nottinghamshire. Um, unfortunately the shop isn't actually online so um, I won't put um, the link below or anything because um, they haven't got a website unfortunately. Um, but yeah so this was really easy to do. So all I did was join the two pieces with my overlocker. Um, I used a four thread stitch on my overlocker so it's nice and strong and then I've literally um, again ironed that over at the bottom there so I folded it out to at the outer edge and then I've ironed it down and I've literally top stitched all the way down from top to bottom and I think that's worked really well it's kept the seam in place and it also looks really smart as well um, I was quite savvy with the way that I actually cut the fox fabric here this kind of woodland print fabric so I actually used the um, the salvage edge um, of the fabric so that, that was um, the outer piece um, so I thought that was going to look quite nice it meant that um, I didn't have to do any extra stitching on it or anything there um, because it's already kind of finished um, as it was on the roll so I thought what's the point in doing um, the extra stitching and whatnot if I didn't really have to so all I did then was um, for the ends of both of the tablecloth um, parts again I just overlocked it and then ironed it and top stitched it so um, again I'm really pleased with that um, it's not something that I thought of making before but definitely if um, you know I was doing like a special birthday party or I don't know any other kind of special occasion I would consider making another one because it was so easy to do um, I did both this and the napkins in one afternoon so um, yes yeah, I, I was quite pleased with the, with the kind of general speediness of that all so um, yeah it's quite good so if I just pop that on the floor get that out of my way just so I can clear a bit of space here um, I can show you um, what else I've been working on so uh, another project that I did for myself during December was this lovely Edie top so if I just stand up a little bit you can actually see that a little bit more so I'm wearing it with my jeans today um, I'll put some pictures on the screen of me actually wearing it as well you can see it's got quite a nice kind of low-ish back on there um, so yeah so I was actually gifted this fabric from uh, Minerva Crafts or should I say Minerva and um, it's a lovely art gallery fabric it went on to the Minerva blog I think 24th of December if you want to um, click back and have a look at that you can um, read all about how I got on with the project there it's the first time um, that I've ever used any art gallery jersey but it's a beautiful quality um, I've always wanted to use some so um, thank you to uh, Minerva for gifting it to me um, it's worked absolutely beautifully for this project um, if you've not made the ED top before I would um, definitely recommend it if you're looking for a nice easy um, jersey top project to do um, it would be really easy to make into a dress as well I think there is an option for that in the pattern pack um, but I'm not sure without checking but I think there is so it's got this lovely kind of boat type neckline um, it's very similar um, to the Agnes top I suppose but I think the, the neckline is slightly different um, it's got lovely sleeves one thing that I would say about the pattern is I found that the sleeves came up quite tight even though it is a jersey so what I did was I, I just added um, an extra 1.5 centimetres to uh, the sides of the sleeve size that I'd actually cut out and um, that worked well for me. I've actually um, sized between a number of different sizes on this project. So I started out with a size 10 here at the top, then I've actually worked down to a 12 around about this kind of central area. As you can see it's got a little bit of room in it but I did want it to be nice and comfortable and then I've actually gone down to a 14 around the hip. Um, again I've got plenty of room in there but it just means that it's nice and comfortable to wear and also I can tuck it in it looks nice with a skirt and I think it looks quite nice with my jeans as well so um, it is a kind of Christmassy type theme I suppose because it's got these lovely stags on there um, but I am hoping to wear it you know into the months ahead as well because it you know it's not got reindeer on or um, 
I don't know, holly or Christmas trees or anything. So I figured because it is such a nice top, it seems a bit of a waste just to stick it in my drawer and you know wait until um, next year to wear it again. So um, I am planning on wearing this, um, you know, throughout the kind of winter and probably into the spring or whatnot as well. So yeah, really pleased with that. Um, I also made my husband a jumper for Christmas. Now, it was actually quite tricky um, to make this jumper uh, on the basis that it was um, just finding the time to do it. So I was doing it like a little bit here, a little bit there in the evenings, squeezing in sort of 10 or 15 minutes, basically when he wasn't looking, when he was in the other room or when he was at work or something. So, but I was really pleased that I managed to get it all done um, without him seeing. Um, because basically I sew here in my dining room we've got a kind of kitchen diner type arrangement so it's quite tricky for him not to see things if I'm trying to kind of um, hide a project and you know keep it from him so it's a surprise um, but yeah he was really pleased with it I was really pleased with it so it all worked out well in the end um, I'm gonna put a bit of footage on the screen of him actually um, wearing the jumper so you can see um, you will have to excuse any marks that you can see down the front of it because he has been wearing it non-stop since Christmas hence me actually not having it with me to actually show you because he is wearing it at the moment um, so um, I think he has probably got a few bits of kind of dinner and just other stuff down the front so yeah apologies but I made it out of a lovely um, sweatshirt weight jersey um, which um, I've had in my stash for a while so I'm not really sure where I got it from but um, yeah it's really really nice jersey and it's got kind of lovely kind of fleece backing on it so it's really cozy and, and lovely to wear and then I actually used a ribbing, um, black ribbing jersey for inside the hood. Um, the hood wasn't supposed to have a kind of facing um, or lining type thing, but I decided to add one in um, just for a bit of extra kind of fanciness. Um, I used a birder pattern to actually um, make the uh, the jumper for him. I can't remember what number it is, but I'll um, I'll make sure that I put the, uh, the the details in in the section below um, if you're interested and um, you want to have a look. And I'll try and put a little picture up on the screen for you as well. Um, I forgot to take it out of my pattern box before I um, started to film this video, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I was really pleased with those. Um, I also managed to squeeze in a little bit of time to make a few uh, little Christmas decorations um, for friends for Christmas, but I completely forgot to actually take any um, pictures of those before I um, I sent them off as parcels for friends so um, apologies I forgot completely about that um, apart from that um, I've been mainly working on my coat project so um, you may remember in my last video I talked about making the Tilly and the Buttons Eden coat project so um, yeah it's a big project and uh, I was um, you know looking forward to making it and still looking forward to making it because I'm kind of in the midst of it all at the moment um, but yeah I'm really enjoying it so far so I just wanted to talk you through uh, where I am at the moment and um, give you a bit of an update on uh, the materials that I've used and how I'm finding it all so far so um, I was actually um, gifted part of the fabric and then I bought some of the fabric as well so um, firstly I'll show you um, this lovely kind of brown wool so this is going to be the outside of the fabric, um, outside of outside the fabric, I mean outside of the coat. So um, yeah, so this was gifted to me by um, the fabric guys online. Um, I'm um, doing some um, blogs for them. So they gifted this to me in exchange for um, an honest blog review. So um, I'll be writing that up when I'm finished my project and I'll let you uh, know um, through my Instagram page when that's actually going online. So yeah, that's a lovely quality um, kind of wool type fabric and um, I think that's going to work perfectly for the outside of my duffel coat. So I'm actually making the coat version of the Eden jacket rather than, no, you probably see Bentley down here, um, rather than the anorak type version. So um, there are actually pictures, I think on the back of the actual pattern pack you can see a picture of the duffel coat I can't actually find one in here right now um, but there's lots of pictures of the duffel version online as well it, you know if you search sewing Eden on Instagram or um, just on Google to be honest and go to the images section you can actually see loads of uh, versions of the Eden coat version made up on there rather than the anorak so um, yeah, I was completely inspired by all the different pictures that I've seen online and I spent, you know, quite a long time thinking about what lining fabric I was going to use and, um, you know, what other kind of fixtures I was going to use as well. So um, by fixtures, I mean things like zips and, you know, the, uh, the duffel, I um, can't remember what they're called now, toggles. Um, yeah, so 
This is the zip that I'm going to use. So this is a nice uh, metal open-ended zip. So I thought that was going to work really well for the project. I went for a black one that's got um, this lovely bronze colour zip down the middle. So I think that's going to work well and I think it's going to go well with uh, the brown uh, outer layer there. And then for the inside, I'm actually using a cotton sateen fabric. So this has got a bit of a stretch to it. Um, you may recognise this fabric because I've got some left over from a dress project that I did uh, with Adele for, um, from Button and Pip for the hack off. Um, little while ago just before Christmas so I decided that I like this fabric so much that I ordered some more from Material Girl Laura online um, I ordered I think I'd probably got about half a meter left so I ordered an extra uh, one and a half meters which seems to have worked out quite well for the for the lining for uh, my coat um, in terms of the size for my jacket I actually decided to make a four at the top size four at the top going down to a five around the hip area um, the main reason that I've done that is because I've decided to quilt my lining so I wanted a little bit of extra room on the inside um, and also I wanted it to be nice and comfortable so that I can get you know a thick jumper underneath and um, I, you know one thing I can't stand is just feeling like I'm you know kind of confined within my jackets and things and everything's a little bit too tight so um, I just wanted it to be nice and roomy and um, you know nice and snuggly um, for these cold winter months so I'll show you what I've done so far so uh, the quilting part is something that I've basically added in myself that's not actually in um, the pattern instructions um, but it's so easy to do and um, it's not something that I've done before but I just decided after seeing some pictures online that um, I would decide to uh, quilt my lining just to make it nice and extra cosy. So um, you can see on my mannequin here I've just used um, a very lightweight kind of wadding um, that I got from um, just a, a local shop to me here. Again they're not online um, but there's plenty of places online that do sell uh, this very lightweight wadding. Um, if you did want to use some yourself. So what I did was I cut my lining pieces of my jacket. So again, I've used this uh, lovely cotton sateen fabric and then I've literally backed them in this um, lovely um, kind of wadding fabric. So it's nice and nice and fluffy. Um, and then what I did was I used chalk to basically draw lines across um, my fabric and then back the other way to kind of create little diamond shapes. So um, I will put some extra footage of me on the screen um, to, so you can see a little bit more what I'm talking about. Um, but I think that's worked quite well. I, d I wasn't too precise when I was doing my, my drawing with the chalk. I just wanted it to um, you know, look quite pretty um, and also keep the uh, wadding actually in place. Um, you can see probably from this side the actual diamond shapes is a little bit better. So I've gone that way and then I've gone back that way. So um, yeah, I think it looks pretty nice to be honest and um, I was quite pleased with that. For the arms, I decided to use an anti-static lining fabric that was left over from a dress project that I also did um, before Christmas. So that's um, worked out quite well. Um, I basically wanted to be able to slide my arms in and out really easily. So I think that's gonna work uh, nicely there. And then because I thought that actually my arms might get cold, because I've got this lovely wadding on the inside of my jacket around my body area, uh, my arms do get quite chilly, even though I'm gonna have this lovely wool on the outside. I've also added in an interlining as well. So in order to do that, if I just slide this out, you can see, I've actually used um, part of an old bed sheet um, for the interlining. So if you don't know, an interlining is the piece that you have in between the lining that you can see on the inside of the jacket and the fabric that you can see on the outside of the jacket. So it's just an inner, inner layer that you, you can't see uh, when the jacket's all kind of st stitched together. Um, so in order to add that in, I've literally cut the arms out twice and then I have tacked that all the way around um, the sleeve head, all the way around down both of the arms and whatnot, just to hold it in place. So basically I was working with um, two arm pieces in the end um, in order to attach them to uh, my main bodice lining. So I think that's worked quite well and hopefully that will keep me nice and warm. Um, so what I'm doing next is I'll be um, sewing the hood together and then um, attaching both the, the lining to the main part of my wool jacket as well. So in my next video I'll give you a bit more of an update on uh, where I am with everything. But before then I just wanted to give you a few extra tips on uh, what to do if you are thinking of making the Eden jacket yourself. So um, even though I would say that markings are um, essential for any project that you're doing, particularly if you're making a coat project, for me, the, um, the markings, whether you do little triangles cut out or you um, 
you know you do tailor's tax or uh, whatever it is um the markings that are included on all the pattern pieces are essential for making this jacket just makes it so easy to put everything together um, and uh, I found that that's been really, really useful. Um, the instructions in the book are um, really straightforward to use in alterly patterns. Um, they're, they're always really great. Um, it's illustrated with pictures all the way down and then you've, you've got all the instructions as well. Um, it talks you through step by step. There's um, different instructions in here for both versions of the jacket if you are making either the anorak version or the coat version. So. Um, you know, it's, it's up to you which, which version you do, obviously. Um, I found that the cutting layouts on the inside of the, um, the pattern pack um, were also very helpful as well. Um, it talks about for cutting the, the bodice pieces um, that you should cut them um, in a particular way. So particularly for the outer layer of the wool, um, it does talk about cutting it uh, on a single layer um, of the fabric and um, it wants it to be um, the wrong side up so basically you've got the right side of the fabric facing the table and then you've got um, the you know the wrong side of the fabric facing you with your pattern piece on top so it, it, it gives you all the instructions right here in this little booklet so I found that, that was really really useful so I would definitely recommend following the book step by step if you are making this coat because it just kind of holds your hand um, through the whole process but I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been making in December and hearing an update on my coat project. Um, for um, the rest of the month, there's only actually a few days left in December, but I am going to be continuing to make uh, my lovely coat project. Um, I actually forgot to show you, this is a little pocket that I'm working on at the moment. Um, I'm going to do the patch pockets on my version so you can see that's the lining fabric and that's the outside of the fabric. So I think the two work really well together actually. Um, but I will keep you posted on how I'm getting on with my Eden coat. And if you follow me on Instagram as well, I will put a few um, pictures on there um, of my finished garment as well so um, I'll keep you posted but I'd love to hear what you're making at the moment if you did want to leave me a comment below and let me know if you managed to squeeze in any sewing time over the um, the festive period as well um, I know it's a busy time for people but um, for me sewing is really important and it just kind of gives me that kind of outlet to be creative um, outside of you know um, anything else that I've got going on so um, I do hope you found some time to be creative yourself as well don't forget if you have enjoyed watching this video please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed recently um, I really do appreciate it and um, I hope you enjoy uh, watching all of my videos to come um, but for today I'll leave it there and I'll say uh, once again a Merry Christmas. Um, I know it's a bit late, um, but if you have celebrated Christmas, um, I hope you had a lovely one and I'll see you soon. Until next time, bye.